Here's Moss and Stop the Spartans. We'll have highlights. We'll get up close and personal with the quiet leader of the Wolverines, and we'll look ahead to a major challenge. Penn State's coming to town. We'll scout Paterno's troops. All that and more coming up next. With Gary Moeller and Jim Brandstatter. 40 to 20, Michigan defeats Michigan State on Saturday. And uh, Gary Moeller, uh, you didn't say before the game, but you've been waiting for this one for a year, and you got it. Well, you're right, Jim, and I think anybody that's ever played or coached at Michigan would feel the same way. And 365 days, sometimes it's a long time. It rolls around quickly, but uh, it's one of the things we felt like we had to accomplish if we were going to be a good team this year. We were getting ready to tape this show, and you said, boy, I wonder what this show looked like a year ago. It looked a whole lot different, and so did the game. Your first possession, you go out and establish the run. Right, we got him stopped. We kicked off, and we got him stopped. We got back out here, and Wheatley goes around left end for nine, and then we get a holding penalty, Jim, and then we go back to third and 27, a 19-yard uh, holding penalty, but here Todd finds Mercury Hayes, who just comes up short. In the first possession, rather than try to go for it on fourth down, I thought the idea of kicking the ball here would be good, and Remy came through for us. Well, it gets you some points, and it gets you a 3 nothing lead in the first quarter. It kind of gets you started quickly, which you haven't done, which I thought was important in right. this game. Right, very important. And then they come up with a big play here. This uh, We had a blitz on there, and we missed a tackle, and Banks delivered for them, and, and they, he hits Carter. It goes 61 yards down to about our 15-yard line. Luckily, our defense come through. Or not luckily, it was, they did a good job here, and we shut down uh, the running attack, and we forced uh, Michigan State to settle for three. That was key, shutting down the running game, because that's what they do best is run the football. Even after the big play, they couldn't get in the end zone. A little bit of a momentum change. Your defense stopped them. It's a 3-3 game. Right, and you got to have those things. I mean, that, that becomes important, and stopping them inside the 20 you can do if your attitude's good. Here, Banks gets around. This is what he can do well, Jim. He eludes a tackler there, has a rifle, and he hits Mason over the middle for about 30 yards, and that's a big play for him. But again, the field shrinks. Our defense holds. We don't like it, but three to uh, six to three is a lot better, obviously, than 10 to three. So. And that's, that's early in the second quarter. Then you guys come back, and instead of the ground game, which you'd been working early, you go to the air. Any reason? Well, I think we had to mix it up, and we felt that all the time. And you, you got to use Todd, and you got to use Amani and Merck and those kids, get them the ball to have a balanced attack. But yet, this is the kind of stuff that you love to do as a coach and usually wins games. And Bianca Batuka, after we hit Amani for about 16, goes 47 yards down inside their 10 yard line. And then you got down close, a couple of timeouts, you go to this play. Right, Wheatley comes out here and uh, kind of gets man coverage. No one picked him up. We did this later, and they got a touchdown exactly the same way. But it puts us up 10-6, and I, I think the momentum at that time switched, particularly after Trevor Price here nails Banks for a eight-yard loss, and this is a big play here. You had to get after Banks. You said so before the game, and you really blitzed him a couple times. You used Price, you used Jason Horn to... Get after Banks, their quarterback, did a nice job against him. Jim, we're as good as our defensive wall up front. Here's uh, Collins coming back. Seth Smith steps in front of a defender there and makes a great catch for a pickup of about 12. We come right back on the next play and hit Imani for about 11 yards, I believe. Todd's throwing the ball real well, and they pressed our corners. We're going to run by them in a minute, but they... They were up tight on us, and, they, and I thought they did a good job in some respects. Still can't get in the end zone, so you got to go with a field goal, and Hamilton hits it again. Puts you up 13-6 at this point. Uh, again, I think getting up a touchdown was a little bit of a breather for you. Then defensively, you come up big in the closing minutes of the se uh, first half. Right, big play here. Banks rolls out, hits Goldborn, their tailback, and Tyrone Noble puts a good hit on it. I thought he caught the ball and fumbled it but the officials ruled it no, and they were forced to punt us. We didn't get great field position, but after that run, now this looks like Tyrone Wheatley. This is what we expect of him. This 25-yard run puts us in great field and position. This drive starts deep in your own territory. No timeouts, less than two minutes to go. This is a great drive and a momentum building. Right, that's where those timeouts that we had to use earlier really hurt you, but we come away all right because we hit Merck for about 15, then Collins hit Reamer, uh, who gets out of bounds with for about 12-yard gain. This is a big play here to Amani. Todd's really stepping up. Quick release there, and Amani does a good job running it down inside the two. 
Still no timeouts. And it's kind of dicey down here, but you get into the end zone just before the half. A great drive. Uh, 20 to 6 is the halftime score. And at that point, you got to be thinking, you know, all the things that could happen to us at halftime, the big plays we had to make and gaining momentum going into the locker room, that drive had to make you feel great. Well, uh, real good. And, and the thing you're worried about, because there was 20, I think 22 seconds when we snapped the ball, the key was is to run Wheatley. They're looking for the pass to run Wheatley, and hopefully we can just stand up and throw the ball on the ground, kick a field goal if we have to. Well, it was great. The Wolverines have the lead at halftime. It was a big momentum builder, and we'll be back to the second half. But first, we hear from Michigan's Secretary of Defense after that Michigan State game. We did a good job on first down, really. Make, can force them to do other things and to just keep running the ball. Some big plays. And, uh, you know, we really couldn't be stopped today. Todd Collins had an awful nice day against Michigan State. And, uh, you know, going into the locker room, scoring just before the end of the half, had to give you great momentum. And then coming out, you get the ball, which was... Again, great to have happen with the lead. Very key, Jim. You're exactly right. And of course, that you know final touchdown before half, and we mix it up a little bit. Then Wheatley gets loose again and has a nice run, about 20, 25 yards. Then Collins again over the middle to Hayes, and this is on a third down position. Probably the well, the best day, Jim, we've had all year as far as I think we were like over 60 percent on third down. And conversion. that was a problem all season and against Michigan State on Saturday. Boy, you converted the third downs. You couldn't punch it in, but you get another kick from Remy Hamilton, puts you up 23-6. Again, a big possession, first possession of the second half, get points out of it important. Right. And here again, our defense, and I keep talking about the upfront people, but Jason Horn again gets a big sack for a minus 10. I think he had three of them, and Trevor Price has a big one too, so that really helps. Eddie Davis gets in, does a nice job running the ball. Right, our tailback's got a little ding there, nothing serious, but then uh, Eddie came in, and, and he's such a wonderful kid, and I'm really happy for him. And here Todd does a great job of finding Amani underneath and throwing a nice touch pass to him. Wheatley explodes for the touchdown. This is Wheatley again, the old Wheatley. Right. That's what we had to do. And everybody asked me about the running game. And I think our line's been OK all year. Our running backs have run much better the last game and a half, starting in the middle of the Iowa game. It's got to continue, yeah. however. 30 to 6 after that touchdown. They come back and break a kickoff out. And, and this kind of gave them some momentum back. And then they come down and score right away, which kind of put the game back in doubt. Right, yes, exactly right. And we did a poor job returning kickoffs and defending kickoffs. Here they hit Green on a semi-screen pass. We do a poor job tackling. He goes down. They answered the bell very quick here, Jim. What, four or five plays they go in and score. Here, like, we didn't, they didn't cover Wheatley. Now, we don't cover Green here, and he goes, takes the ball in the end zone, makes it 30 to 13. And all of a sudden, it's getting a little dicey. You've seen late leads go away before this season. This is such a key drive, I thought, and a big third down play. Yeah, thir third and three here, and this is where their corner had been sitting down to take us out of the quick throw out there and Merck broke it upfield and Todd was good enough to sense what he was going to do. Did a great job there. And then Tamunga here with a very nice run up here for about 25, 30 yards. Puts the ball in great field position. Talk about a great run by Bianca Batuka. How about this touchdown, Gallup? Yes, here's another one. He breaks a tackle there. He makes a move here. Gets loose right down the sideline and uh, he's a very exciting, emotional young man and our backs I can't say enough. They they did good today. 37-13 at this point, and the defense comes up big again. You force a fumble on a sack. Jason Horn comes up with a recovery. Uh, Kerwin Waldrop got the sack there, Jim, and as you say, Horn got the recovery. Now when we can bounce back and put some points on the board, very important. Uh, Wheatley does a good job here cutting, slashing, and cutting back. He isn't feeling his way like he was early when he first started. And then Biagavatuka comes back. Nice job here, staying inbounds, keeping the clock running, what you wanted to do with this possession. Keeping his balance, and then we had to, again, settle for a field goal. And fortunately, we make it, make it 40 to 13. So the, after they scored, we come back with 10 points, and that obviously helped. They come back late in the game, uh, putting a drive together. And this is, uh, you know, the escapability of Banks. And this is a fourth down play, but they get it down inside the five. Uh -huh. 
How many times are we going to see plays like that? I mean, there's a strong arm quarterback and a very mobile guy, and he's able to make plays like that. Here, our blitz doesn't get home, and uh, they fake us out, and they get field position there, and uh, or excuse me, they get more in field position, they get a touchdown. Uh, 40 to 20 is the final. Here's our Norwegian cruise line play of the week, and it's the touchdown by Bianca Batuka following their touchdown in the second half that, that really put it away, I think, for you. Yes, I, th I think, you know, answering the bell there again, as you indicated, I think was a very key thing, and we're happy we were able to do that. 40 to 20 erases the memories of a year ago, which I know stuck with you for 365 days. Jimmy you can't ever erase those things. <laughs> they, they can't. Uh, you always had to remember those, and we got to go back to East Lansing next year, and that's where it all happened. But very happy with the win today. But you know, there's so much football ahead. We have such a tremendous schedule that's confronted us. And if we if we start to get happy, if we think we've accomplished more than we've accomplished, we're fools. And we got to make sure that we keep our concentration and our focus. The Michigan State victory was big, and and one of the important things too is a retired jersey of Gerald Ford on Saturday. Really a nice gesture by Michigan and a great opportunity for you, the former president, to address the club. Right. I don't know where you sit politically, Jim, and I don't think that's an issue. This is one of the finest men that I've ever had a chance to meet. And for him to spend time to come down and talk to the team. You know, he was a coach one time at Yale when he was going to law school there to come down and address our team and talk a little football to him, tell him the difference in rules and things. But yet... He understands what the tradition of Michigan means and how you have to live up to that tradition. He did a great job of getting that point across to our young men. It might have been uh, a help in that preparation for Michigan, Michigan State, the Wolverines, win it over the Spartans. Don't go away. We'll be back. Take a look at uh, Steve Morrison, one of the really, truly good ones inside linebackers for the Wolverines. But first, we'll hear from another one of Saturday's heroes. You can only save it a moment for a little bit. But yet, still, you got Penn State, Illinois, Ohio State, and Wisconsin. So you can't just sit here, you know, sit back and say, okay, we won. As Coach Mullins say, you know, enjoy the victory until the bus. Each week when Michigan takes the field, Steve Morrison leads them into battle. The senior co-captain from Birmingham Brother Rice is one of the more quiet leaders they've had recently, but he's clearly a leader. Voted captain by his teammates before the season, Morrison wasn't sure he knew what the job was all about. Certainly when I, I first was voted, I, I, I felt there's a, a large weight on my shoulders, and you know, I went in to speak with Coach Moore, and I actually spoke with uh, John Milligan, who was a captain here a few years back, and you know, he just said, go out and just do your thing because you were voted uh, for a reason, you know, the things you do and just don't try to change anything. And, and uh, so I think uh, there's really not any added pressure or anything like that towards it. Truly, when I came in here, I didn't, I didn't uh, foresee myself playing much or anything like that. And because I had always held Michigan in such a high respect and, you know, thought, you know, I could never play there. And, you know, it's, just, it's been a, a great learning experience for me. And it's, uh, you know, it's just been the happiest part of my life. The game 